So a hobby that really seemed to come into its own starting around the late 90s or so is the collection of rare video games, and especially Nintendo video games. Uh, sometimes you just have your you know, kind of hard-to-find cards, basically they had limited production runs, maybe weren't so popular back in the day. And then you have your real gems, like um, Tengen Tetris. Tengen was uh, producing uh, an NES version of Tetris when Nintendo had the exclusive console rights. Uh, in the end, they wound up having to pull all of the copies that they had left on the shelves, but about 50,000 or so estimated wound up being sold. Now, perhaps the most well-known rare Nintendo games are these 1990 Gold Cart Nintendo World Championships. Um, only about 26 were given away as prizes in Nintendo Power, and recently they've sold for as high as $18,000. But I'm here to talk about an acquisition I recently made that I actually consider a little bit more rare than even that famous gold cart. Uh, and that would be the one of the prototypes for um, Earthbound for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, now if you're not familiar with Earthbound, uh, it was actually named uh, Mother in Japan. Uh, it was a kind of a quirky RPG uh, made by Shigesato Itoi. And uh, in 1990, Nintendo spent all of the effort and time and money to translate it and basically get it ready for North American release. However, due to mitigating circumstances like um, the soon to be released Super Nintendo that they wanted to focus on and uh, also the marketing and costs just for making the darn game, they decided not to release it. Now the sequel to Mother, Mother 2, was uh, released in America eventually as Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, which you've probably heard of, at least you should have if you're watching this video. However, um, the prototype for the NES version of Earthbound, fully translated, is the subject of a very long story which I've already told. The prototypes, there are three, possibly four, of these that exist in the wild. But let me give you a quick rundown on where each of these prototypes came from. So the first known public appearance of these Earthbound prototypes uh, occurred in 1998 on the rec.games.video.classic forums when someone named Mariotti uh, was uh, basically selling it to uh, any rare collectors who wanted it. Uh, according to him, he received it from a mysterious Nintendo of America employee. Now, if you've played Earthbound for the NES on an emulator, then uh, this is the ROM dump that was used. Uh, it was actually hacked by Neo Demiforce in order to circumvent anti-piracy measures and to work with Nesticle, which was by far the most popular NES emulator at the time. Uh, they also added the uh, suffix zero in order to kind of differentiate from Earthbound, which I already said was released for the Super Nintendo. Um, now Phil Sandhop, the localization producer for Earthbound on the NES, says that this is without a doubt the game he worked on, so it's pretty much confirmed as a, the real deal in the Rare Game community. So, in 1998, Mariotti sold it to Kenny Brooks, who wound up dumping the game for Neo Demiforce. Um, a few years later, it was then sold to an Andrew de Rowan. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Uh, and then a few years after that, it was uh, sold to a friend of Andrew's. And that is where prototype number one lives today. Then later in 2006, a rare game collector by the name of Jolly Rancher, who was uh, vacationing in the Hamptons, uh, came across a garage sale from a uh, former Nintendo of America employee. Uh, he told Jolly Rancher that uh, he had worked at Nintendo for about 10 years and part of his job was to go around to uh, all these Nintendo competitions at the time and he had a whole box of mostly prototype games that he sold to Jolly Rancher for about 40 bucks. Now as part of this grand haul he found two uh, Earthbound for the NES prototypes uh, which he wound up selling. If you want to see pictures of his whole haul, you can do a Google search for his name, Jolly Rancher, and uh, basically see all the great stuff he found, including both of those Earthbound prototypes. Now, he sold both prototypes in 2006. Uh, number two went to uh, an eBayer by the name of Sample Seller, who lives in the Netherlands, and uh, then a few years later was sold to uh, Die Young 7, uh, or Imputuity, who uh, lives in Great Britain. And actually, this is the exact prototype that I have. I bought it directly from Imputuity uh, off of eBay most recently. The second of Jolly Rancher's prototypes, which we'll name number three overall, 
uh, was sold to a uh, Dr. Todd Curtis, who I believe is an orthodontist in Indiana, who then sold it to an Andrew Bixler in Ohio. Now, I have not been able to contact Mr. Bixler, but I do believe that this is the current resting place of uh, prototype number three. Prototype number four, uh, which is generally thought to be on the up and up, uh, surfaced in 2009, uh, but with a few differences from the other prototypes that we've seen. Uh, for example, the UV stickers on the EP-ROMs are off, which is actually kind of dangerous uh, for reasons I'll go into in a little bit. And furthermore, the chips are not soldered directly onto the board. Instead, they're placed in uh, integrated circuit holders. Now, the original owner of this prototype was Matt Alderman, who's a former Nintendo video game counselor, and that is confirmed. Uh, and he tried to sell the game on eBay in 2009, but eBay pulled the auction for unknown reasons. Uh, it's been said that he sold it to somebody privately after that, but unfortunately all of my attempts to contact Mr. Alderman have failed, so it's anyone's guess where this one lives. Uh, now that I've kind of told you the tale of the four prototypes that are known to exist in the wild, uh, let's open up this baby and see what's inside. So, uh, something kind of sketchy you might think about this cartridge uh, is that uh, it's well, written in marker. Um, but if you go back to the original uh, first Earthbound prototype, you'll, um, which was confirmed by Phil Santop to be uh, a true prototype, uh, there's some marker on that too. So I guess it was pretty much standard operating procedure for uh, uh, Nintendo to just mark up their prototypes like so. Taking off the back very carefully, you'll see the back of a circuit board. Um, not very exciting in itself, so let's flip that over. So, um, this probably looks about what you would expect the inside of a uh, NES cartridge to look like. Um, however, for comparison, uh, let's show you uh, what an actual one looks like, and here I have Dragon Warrior because I happen to have it around, and uh, yeah, actually most uh, real run Nintendo games, NES games, did not take up much of the cartridge. Um, you'll see there. This is once again Dragon Warrior. Uh, you have your uh, EP-ROMs all sitting there, your battery backup and so forth, and uh, yeah, basically the reason for the wide, large amount of space in this cartridge is that, uh, you know, for prototypes. You know, Nintendo wanted to uh, always have make sure that had room for all of the components it would put in there. Alright, so uh, the very first thing I'd like to point out here is the uh, name of the board. You'll notice it's an NES TK EP ROM 01. Uh, basically that just is a type of board. The TK ROM is just one of the many types of boards that Nintendo used. Uh, the term TK EP ROM means that it's basically a prototype board. It's mainly it's supposed to be used with EP ROMs as opposed to uh, ROM chips, you know, uh, read-only memory chips, which is what stored the game uh, data. 